All right, let's dive right in. The, uh, this particular video is going to be covering our procedural terrain specifically for the splat map this time. This is the first one of the series that covers the splat map. So the splat map with this one, I have two layers that I'm going to be working with. And you can see that we can just draw with them and create these interesting textures and colors. And I can set it to blue. There's also black in here. That's a little bit weird. I'll come back to that one. Uh, white, black, and blue. And so you can see that the only layers that I have here are, are white and blue. Um, I wanted to showcase some of how the data works. And when we get into the equations of how this works, uh, I'll show you exactly what that means, why it's doing this, why it's creating black. But it's important to know for errors, because if you run into an error, black is one of the easiest ways to see that it errored out. All right, now I'm gonna scroll out and I wanted to show you this general setup. Um, right now I can just draw on here and create all this whatever I want to of whatever color or whatever one of these palette items I have. Now over here I have the paint layer. If I change its size you can see it just redraws it. So now I've got the same stuff happening like I did before um, to actually offset this. Now I want to show you, look at the square size, it's 289. If I go over, keep dragging this, and keep dragging this um, then you can see it gets up to 512, well, went to 515, let's put it at 512. 512 is the size of how much this takes. So there should be no white edge anywhere. Okay, so effectively there is no white edge, at least according to where I just pointed you to. <laughs> um, so let's, ta let's continue taking a look at this. Uh, if I change the square size down to 511, now we start seeing a little tiny white edge and I will zoom you into it. You can see this white edge showing up. Same thing over here. Now it only shows up on two sides because the square grid starts in the corner of zero, zero. So you can also use the fact that those are there to identify what the real corner is, where the starting is, or to make sure you have the, st the corner of your terrain identified, um, make sure that you have this tool on and that it is set to pivot not center. So over here, both of these sides will still be black. There. Even though the other edge is showing white. Okay. So now let's actually change this up. So 512 divided by 8 to get a chessboard is 64. Uh, so we put 64 in there and now we've got a chessboard set up. So what's important to know is the size of your resolution here matters. Now, that is not going to match the matter, the resolution of your height map. Your height map, let me go into the construction wheel, and this one, the last time we were working with it, was 129. The control texture resolution, that is the splat map. I don't like the fact that the Unity Terrain system has so many different names for things. So in this place, we're calling it the control texture resolution. Um, in the code, we're going to call it the alpha map. And what we refer to it most predominantly uh, when just referencing this stuff is the splat map. Okay, so let, I just wanted to point out where these values are. If I were to go up in resolution, we would see no change here. So let me go up in resolution. You can see it's still sharp edges, you know, relatively sharp to where a, the terrain normally does. If I were to drop this down to say 256, it starts getting more blurry. And you can see it's getting more and more blurry along the way. These are starting to disappear more and more. Um, so I'm gonna put that back. Uh, so if I go back up to 512, you can still see that it mostly kept its exact same positioning and size. Um, but that blur is still there, at least until I trigger a change here. So let's just go back to six and four. We got my chessboard. All right, now it looks like there's a break here that's actually a terrain height difference. I can prove it with uh, this shadowed wireframe. There, see that one coming up? Uh, it stood out to me just a second ago and I was wondering why am I seeing an edge there? All right, so let's start taking a look at the actual code for this. This is following the same terrain mod layer system I did I showed in the previous videos. 
uh, for I believe the first one I did was where we started putting in island layer um, or possibly certainly had it in place by force graph layer and was still explaining it there okay but I'm not going to re-explain it every time in here so now we've got this one um, it's black in here because of an error I left in the code to demonstrate this that I can have that in here let me go ahead and put on paint for a second uh, if I put on paint you can see it's blue and white and I can paint it there we go um, that is because there are only two layers in there but if their layers all combine to a value of zero it's literally black no lighting no nothing no outline it's just black okay so now let's go into the code of this how does this work our mod layer our height painter which to point out this will be changed into a gradient height changer um, and later on we can add all sorts of other effects for intelligently coloring sections of the terrain so inside of here we see the splat map uh, and that is effectively a 3d array so we have the x the y and the layer count so uh, in this case that is 512 512 2 and here's where we're setting it when we rebuild now rebuild operates like normal um, where are the so or I'll get into the rebuild exactly how that part works in a second apply works like normal if the splat map is null to begin with we trigger the rebuild um, but otherwise we go back to uh, uh, once we have it then we just say okay take the terrain data this is the same terrain data you can get off of terrain dot terrain data and it has a function called set alpha maps and you pass in starting where you want to start so in this case we're redoing the entire thing so we're starting from zero um, and then we put the splat map on that 3d array of values uh, of floats uh, where one for a particular layer is that means that layer is at hundred percent of its view you shouldn't be going over one you can but I don't know what the effects are and I would imagine uh, I, I don't know if that's used by anything else or if there, there's possibility that that could break down from version to version so I would advise that your values stay at one but feel free to check it <laughs> okay so in this we regenerate our splat map as soon as we rebuild it we just create a brand new splat map okay uh, now uh, we're going to set all the values ideally we don't even need to set this here this would probably be better if we just kept reusing the same piece of memory rather than triggering garbage collection on such a large array because this is huge by the way 512 by 512 is 262,000, so about a quarter of a million uh, we end up with here and then we have layers to account for as well so that's 500,000 it's over 500,000 and we end up th this is floats so each one of those is taking four bytes <laughs> so that is uh, what is it, two megs two megs of information just for this one value and I'm letting it go to garbage collection every frame basically or every time I update this so yeah it would be better to actually apply something to repurpose that but I'm not doing it yet okay um, now I'm going to skip this one for a second and we're doing the same X Y loop we'd go through every single X and Y that we have for uh, inside it from zero to the alpha map width remember I said that that control texture or splat map is also referred to as alpha map so here is our alpha map and the function for set alpha maps okay now we have I, I'm basically just setting the grid this is the key thing right here what am I setting it to um, this one you'll notice I have I have two odd things here so I have the X and Y so we're setting it for the X or Y position and it's an else statement that's how we're we're doing some math above here to figure out where on the square grid we are um, and you'll notice that I tend to favor approaches where I just give it the X Y location that I'm at and I will be able to identify what color that's supposed to be for this grid just like I just give it the uh, the XY coordinate on the map and I can get the height for that particular spot and all of the things that affect it um, so I'm doing it the same way here there are certainly other ways I could have done this where I'm simply adding to uh, an integer and uh, subtracting it again and resetting the colors every single time just putting a simple counter in here and that would work too 
Um, anyway, but this is a way to get the square grid math to work. Um, this is another one right here. Uh, there's two different ways I could have had this, and depending on how you look at it, it's easier to understand, but I'm not here to show the square grid. Uh, but if, the, if you did want to use it, you could also turn on this one and then just have Y on for this if statement. If Y on, then splat map this, else do that. Okay, key importance here is I have the X, Y, and then the layer. You can see I have layer zero and layer one. If the, the value of both of these layers combined should come out to one. If you don't have anything, you're basically telling it, um, okay, what is, the what is the color of the pixel I'm setting here? And it takes a look at it and it says, okay, well, there's blue in it. Um, so we're passing in blue, or I guess in this one, this would be white. Uh, and we say, okay, so the white one, the, the zero layer in this case was white. Um, it's 100%, so our first value is just white. Now, let's say that it was, uh, that we didn't have that, that we set it, uh, instead of setting the value of, to one, we set the next layer to zero, which it already is zero, so that effectively does nothing. Um, it's as if this line didn't even exist. So in this case, we set this to one, uh, which this is ideally what it's supposed to be. Uh, we're basically saying 100% should this this particular spot should be 100% blue and this particular spot should be 100% white. Okay, so if I save this and return to the code, the whole thing's going to turn blue white. So there, we now have blue white. There's the little black dots that are showing up from the gizmos from some other tools. Uh, but this is the the height map or the 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 color map for here. Again, I can do I can select this and I can paint the textures, select the layer, and I can still paint and whatever this happens when I'm modifying this. It just gets rid of it. Okay, so remember if all of your values come to zero, or in this case one of the settings will be in one case every one of the squares, uh, one square every other square will be black. Um, Identifying the fact that black is a point of failure is a quick way to identify when there's something wrong with your code. I do not advise testing in the first place using uh, black textures. I also don't advise using white textures. My original color choice was red and blue, I believe I chose. Uh, white, white and black was a little more contrasting, and now I'm back to, uh, let's see, what was that, white and blue. Okay, um, so... If you're combining them together, remember, it's taking a piece of each layer and it's adding them together. So it's 0.5% times the color value uh, of this one uh, to get the first float, like how much of that is going to show up through. All right, uh, I think those were all the key issues. If you want to, you can check out the math. It's basically we're just doubling the size of the square, and then we're uh, doing a remainder on it. We're getting a remainder, so we're dividing this by double the size of the square. And if it's greater than the square size, uh, and I'm doing a plus one because otherwise uh, a pixel of one, a size of one, would never work because one is never going to be greater than one. Uh, so we never end up with something different, and so that first stripe will always be the same color. Okay, uh, anyway, so that's the reasons for that one. And then we set the splat map, uh, we apply it here in set alpha maps, and that's working in the terrain editor. The same general functionality uh, works inside of runtime as well. All right, uh, if you have any questions about this, if you have different directions you want to see me cover on this, I am planning on turning this into a gradient height map and then adding some intelligence for uh, those particular node values to identify that we need different things inside of different areas of the terrain. All right, uh, that's it. Talk to you later.